you guys it's two bricks and I'm really excited to show you guys the beginning of a brand new build series which is something that I've had in my head for a really long time and I've wanted to do almost since the very beginning of this channel and now finally I feel like the time is right um, I have the time to really invest into it uh, what I want to and to be able to bring you guys something really really special so obviously you saw from the intro you know from the video title this is going to be a Hogwarts castle building series and the reason that I wanted to do this is because uh, back in 2018 I believe Lego did uh, an absolutely incredible job relaunching their Harry Potter uh, Lego series um, which is something that had been around almost as long as uh, the Star Wars series I think um, Harry Potter started in 2001 and uh, Star Wars started back in 1999 but obviously uh, several long hiatuses in the Harry Potter line and different products of varying quality kind of came out throughout the years and and then finally they kind of went on hiatus and now it's back and uh, it's got an absolutely staggering collection of different items figures creatures vehicles buildings accessories all of the the stuff that you can see kind of laid out before you and, and actually this is only a tiny tiny taste of the whole uh, collection this is just some of the stuff that I really liked that I had on hand and I put out and I don't even have Diagon Alley or um, a lot of the other sets in here. So um, yeah, an absolutely amazing uh, product launch by Lego. Uh, the one area that I feel could be improved and that's where this series comes in is um, kind of paradoxically Hogwarts Castle itself. Um, I really love what they did with the, the mini castle that we see here in the background. And um, I think that that was a really, really well realized fleshed out version of Hogwarts and one that really like when you look at it it really kind of um, I don't know it sparks the imagination I can really imagine little people walking around between the walkways and courtyards and and going into the little classrooms and I think that that was actually the most successful uh, iteration of Hogwarts Castle to come out of the new product launch um, the actual sets themselves the minifig compatible play sets of the castle I don't really feel capture um, the kind of play and uh, internal and external aspects that you would want to have to, to feel like you have a really complete depiction of you know what is the main setting of the series and given all of the incredible um, other elements that they've given us for the series I think that's actually really a shame so the goal that I have with this is to bring you a modular series of buildings um, pieces of buildings, stages that uh, as you would purchase them and obviously each one will have their own instructions um, and I'll show you guys how to get a hold of those and get the pieces that you need to build them and as you would build each of the sets you would uh, build up a very complete feeling Hogwarts castle that would look uh, as complete and as realistic as the mini version that you see in front of you but would be scaled where minifigs are compatible with it. It wouldn't be fully minifigure scale because that's insane and <laughs> Some builders have um, created, you know, gigantic million piece uh, Hogwarts castles that are minifig scale. Obviously, I'm not interested in doing that because that's not something that you guys would be able to replicate yourselves. So um, this is kind of taking the approach that I took with my Millennium Falcon, which you can see a video for uh, if you check out the other playlists on my channel. Um, my Stinger Mantis build, um, large, impressive looking, well detailed, accurate to the films, but small enough that you can still afford to actually get the pieces yourself. So uh, today I'm going to be showing you the first build in the new series uh, that is the uh, boathouse and we'll be taking a look at that in a second and the reason that I started with the boathouse is because that's the first thing that the students encounter when they come to Hogwarts as first years they go take the boats across the lake they land at the boathouse and they make their way up to Hogwarts to be sorted into their houses so I thought that would be an appropriate starting point um, there's going to be new builds coming out every so often. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm you guys right away with a bunch of huge stuff, but um, I do have a fair amount of the castle designed already. Um, moving up from Boathouse, you have obviously the Great Hall, which is the next most kind of, or the most recognizable space in Hogwarts. The, the most amount of scenes take place there. So that'll be the next thing that comes up in the series. So very, very excited to get onto all of that and show you guys all of those in the future. Um, but the idea being that you would build this up slowly over time, maybe over several years in fact, uh, depending on how long it takes me to actually get the designs out to you guys, but that you would have um, 
you would have a model at the end or a display, a diorama that is something you can really, really be proud of, really play with, and also really display all of your amazing figures and accessories and all of the different things you've collected from the series uh, inside of that. So that's the goal. Uh, the other thing that I think that the LEGO designers did such a great job of in the Harry Potter relaunch series is giving us uh, structure builds for things like the Burrow and Ford Private Drive and the Night Bus that are kind of the template that I'm going off of where they feel really authentic and accurate and have a very complete feel where you can um, open it up and place your figures inside of it but when you close it up it feels like the full structure and you can really picture um, little people living in there and that's kind of the the whole feel that I want to go for for this series um, and I just think that the the castle has this very uh, traditional fantasy type aspect to it where they're giving you just little hints of areas little indications of rooms there's multiple little hints at Dumbledore's office there's multiple um, different spaces that could double as the potions classroom or other classrooms so it it's all kind of mixed together and your imagination has to kind of do a lot of work to stitch all of that together and I want to eliminate that in my series and have it be something that feels present and feels real uh, for fans of the series that have a lot of these um, really expensive and really really nice items already and want to kind of convert a lot of those pieces and obviously you're gonna have to buy a lot more pieces <laughs> in addition but that you will be able to have uh, a display model that kind of ties everything together um, and makes for a really really incredible uh, conversation piece and display piece so that is the goal and hopefully you guys enjoy going on this journey with me as I build all of these different uh, sets because the architectural side of things is something that I haven't really tackled too much on this channel it's mainly been about sci-fi stuff Star Wars and other you know kind of more uh, fanciful spaceship type things like that so this is going to be a new experience for me as well and um, so far I'm really really enjoying it and hopefully you guys are going to get a kick out of it as well so um, without any more rambling, uh, I want to get on and show you guys the actual build, but there's just one more thing I have to get out of the way first, which is kind of a bit of housekeeping uh, that I think is really important. And yeah, just the last thing that I did want to say before we move on is um, there's been a lot of controversy recently surrounding the Harry Potter universe that has resulted from J.K. Rowling, uh, obviously the creator of the entire Harry Potter franchise with her books, um, and a lot of the things that she said involving the trans community and um, a lot of her um, specific beliefs that I feel are um, really, really harmful and damaging to people in the LGBTQ community. Um, so I just wanted to say that uh, although I obviously don't have a big platform, I do feel like uh, it is my responsibility to say that I do not agree with that and denounce that 100%. And the celebration that I'm bringing to, um, to this series is of the work that thousands of artists have done over a period of what now 15 years 16 years of designing incredible sets props replicas um, theme parks all of that work that has brought the the films and the books to life in a visual way and I want I want to be able to celebrate that work and um, enhance the collection of what is essentially just toys that you guys probably already have purchased and be able to do that in a way that separates it from um, the nasty kind of aspect of hatred and bigotry that is where those beliefs um, that J.K. Rowling is espousing uh, originate from. I don't know J.K. Rowling personally. I don't know her heart and her mind. Um, I'm sure that she doesn't think that she's saying anything wrong. I'm sure that she believes what she says. But unfortunately, um, I have a lot of friends within the LGBTQ plus community, and I know that uh, the stuff that she's been saying has been really, really harmful and really um, hurtful to them. So I just wanted to take a moment to say that I do not support that and that that's not what this channel is about. And, you know, we're all about love and positivity here at Two Bricks. And just wanted to get that out of the way before we progress with the series. I know that it's something I wrestled with a little bit when I considered if I even wanted to go ahead and, cr you know, continue with this um, this build series because like I said, it's something I've had in my head for a long time now, and um, when that stuff started to come out, I was questioning if I should even move forward with it, but, you know, these toys exist, Lego has produced them, they are amazing, they're high quality, uh, kids can still enjoy Harry Potter and get all of the kind of positivity out of it that they got before, it's just, now we just kind of have to put that asterisk on it, unfortunately, um, but that is something that, you know, in the future, 
JK Rowling may change her mind or who knows, we, we don't know what's gonna happen down the line. So um, that's where I stand and hopefully you guys uh, support that and understand that. So um, yeah, without any more of that unpleasantness, uh, let's get on to looking at the Lego. All right guys, so finally here we are taking a look at the very first set of my new Hogwarts uh, build series. So this is the boathouse. This is where the students arrive when they get to Hogwarts and they disembark from their boats. Um, where this takes place in within the grounds of the castle is obviously down at the base of the castle. There's the Black Lake and the water kind of comes into the middle of this here and that's where the boats enter. And then up here we have all the rocks and cliffs that lead up to the castle itself. So um, this is just the first part obviously and um, we're going to be creating a lot more stuff from here on out. So I'm very, very excited. But uh, for today we're just taking a look at this. So. Uh, each one of the structures that I'm creating, I have several different kind of design mandates that I set myself and little challenges to try to make sure that I'm uh, representing certain things that I want about uh, each piece of Hogwarts and have each kind of um, have its own unique set of little play features and things of that sort. So uh, the first one with this is I wanted to hit the aesthetic that uh, this has from the uh, redesigned version because as um, as most Harry Potter fans probably know Hogwarts Castle changed throughout the history of shooting the movies dramatically and several uh, areas of it were redesigned quite substantially and this is one of those so uh, in the very beginning we only got very very tiny glimpses in the background of shots of the boathouse and it was a very big brick or uh, stone structure that had kind of a similar shape to this. The tower was uh, further towards the front. This opening was just a simple arch and then there were the two little doors off to the side, but this was a big stone face at the front here. Um, I don't believe there are any windows in it and it just looked very, very simplified and different. And uh, by the time they got to the last movie, they had scenes that they wanted to actually shoot inside of this thing um, because you know that was called for um, from a story perspective. So this was redesigned to be a much more gothic uh, and actually wooden, I believe, structure that um, looks the way that you see right here. So uh, there are updated pictures of the models that were used for the later movies for shooting and um, some very talented uh, model makers and prop makers have made their own versions as well that you can see online. Um, and you can see here that that's obviously the design inspiration that I went with for my version. Um, so that was number one, hitting the aesthetics. Number two, it has to be able to fit a boat, obviously. So here's a standard Lego rowboat piece, uh, which just fits right in there nice and neat. And then this is the custom rowboat that I made that more closely matches the shaping and aesthetics of the boats that you see in the Black Lake, because they are pretty specific looking rowboat. And I'll give you guys a closer look at that in a little bit. Um, but it needed to be able to fit that as well. So as you can see there, no problem either way. Um, so the idea is the students would disembark from their boats and then uh, come out of what would be doors here. That This is a little too small for minifigures, so you kind of have to use your imagination just a little bit there. But they would come out of here, walk around the little path, and start uh, winding their way up the stairs towards the castle. So there's that. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is make sure that you have access to the interior of this so that you can actually set up a scene. Uh, there's some key scenes that take place in this in the last movie, and I don't want to spoil anything in case you guys are just getting into the series or you know, kids that haven't seen it yet. Um, so I won't be talking about any plot specific stuff, but there are some uh, some crucial scenes here involving Snape, Voldemort, uh, Harry, the kids that all take place down in this scene here. So what I wanted to do is make this be able to split in half like this. So you can just open the whole thing up and you can actually open it up all the way to 90 degrees. And there's room in here where you can um, place figures, have a little scene set up. And then it's just very simple the way that it attaches here. It just has the single stud that just keys into this technic hole and it uh, fits very nicely so um, yeah so that was something that was really important to me uh, inside you can see there's just a couple of little accessories so I just have like a little pole here that you could take off that just helps to pull the boats in to the right you know exact spot um, there's some stairs here for the kids to disembark if they want to get um, or put a separate uh, different kind of boat in the water perhaps a shallower boat like a canoe or something um, that they could then climb down and get access that way. On the other side here, I just have a barrel and an oar, just a single oar right there. Um, and then the whole back section here is filled up with uh, these new square windows, or relatively new, that came with the Great Hall set and 
and forward. Um, so I really thought those were uh, would make for a nice back kind of wall here because this whole thing has basically just windows all around to let as much light in as possible. So I think that's really cool. I used the um, the arch windows here at the bottom to capture this nice kind of detailed shape in here and kind of give an indication of the specific windows that were used down at the bottom. Um, I'm also using dark tan predominantly here, but I have some sand green and some medium nougat to break up that color scheme a little bit. And I tried to replicate this little kind of wooden um, facade here. It has a little bit of a, a nice design to it. So very simply just tried to replicate that um, in there. So yeah, that's that. And then the top windows here uh, are just replicated with uh, this single, um, obviously there's no something behind these grill pieces, um, but the idea was, you know, that these these roofs intersect at this really nice kind of steep angle here, and I really like that, so I wanted to try to capture that. Um, finally, here at the top, we just have this little tower, which um, is really, really simple, and uh, again, when you open it up, this just, it, it interferes ever so slightly up here, but it's like, this whole roof is hinged, so it, it kind of has room to move, so when you bring all that together, it just kind of snaps into place around that, and I use these panel pieces in here that uh, give it a little bit more room to to kind of just slot into that gap right there. So I think that all works really, really well. And then I'll show you guys down here. This will be where uh, you plug this in, and this is kind of the indication of the start of the cliffs and the rocks that kind of wind their way up to Hogwarts Castle. So I just kind of indicated that in there. And uh, yeah, once you plug it in, it will fit seamlessly into the rest of the build of uh, what comes next. So that's going to be something that's really fun. Um, I think approximately, depending on the sellers that you go with, um, the pieces for this will cost somewhere between $50 and $60. Um, it's, a pretty, um, it's a pretty densely packed little set. And then the rowboat here is optional. So I, I wanted to make sure that if you have uh, these standard rowboat pieces that come in certain sets, um, the Great Hall had two of them, I believe. Um, that you would be able to just use those or if you wanted to build my more custom more um, Sort of accurate ish looking boat that you would be able to do that as well. So while we're looking at that Let's take a look at the custom robot So I Tried to maintain as much of the kind of classic rowboat shape and the ability to fit just as many figures in there um, so this can seat uh, one regular size figure back here two here if you're um, strategic about it and then one up at the front and I just have a very very simple representation for the little lanterns that the characters that kind of lights their way um, you can fit a Hagrid in here too if you <laughs> want to have Hagrid at the front of the pack um, obviously he's gigantic though and he looks kind of silly but um, but you can do it and he looks just as silly in one of these so <laughs> it kind of works out equally um, let me just load up some figures in here and show you what that looks like so here is what the boat looks like with Hagrid in it. And let me just take out this because, you know, if Hagrid is in this boat, he wouldn't be using the, he has his lantern, so he doesn't use those uh, those pieces. Uh, I think that looks decently okay. I put that in between uh, where his legs go in between the little gap in between the seats there, just to sink him down as much as possible um, with this design here. And you can obviously also place him up at the front. And I think it looks um, it looks pretty good, actually. Not, not too terrible. And so here we have uh, Ron, Harry, and Hermione, and Susan Bones uh, all loaded up into this thing. And obviously these two, uh, because there's only four studs um, here, you have to put them you know, offset one in front of the other. Um, but I think that works just fine. And some of the boats in that opening scene have three students, some have four, some have two. Um, so it, you, know, you can just load it up however you feel like doing it. So I think that works out really well. And all these characters are the ones with the short legs. And I think that from the side, they look like they're sitting down in there decently well enough. And I think um, I buy it. So uh, yeah, let me just show you a little bit about the design of how I did this really quick, and then we'll move on. Um, so this boat uses a lot of panel pieces and a lot of clips and hinges to try to get the specific angles of uh, the rowing boat. And obviously, I have this nice kind of uh, front section here where it's it's angled forward a little bit and just has this little um, tile on top to cap it off. And I think that's a nice look. And then in the back here, we just have that slightly raised back area for the seating. And I try to capture the color in here as well with uh, the, the uh, dark tan and the, the brown. I think that all comes together pretty nicely. There's actually a photo of the specific rowboats that they used. Um, just, I think it's hanging somewhere in a restaurant. Somebody went ahead and purchased the actual prop 
and uh, so you can see kind of down in here how it has the dark tan coloring. Um, so I think that works out really well. And like I said, if you compare it to a standard Lego Robo piece, um, it has a similar amount of studs. Uh, it's a little bit shorter and a little bit fatter, which is how I feel that it should be. And um, it basically achieves the same thing, except unless, of course, you want to have your boat float, because this, you can see here all the gaps, this boat will not float, uh, this one actually will. So um, those are the main differences. But yeah, um, this is just an option that in case you guys want to have something a little bit more custom, you can do that. So uh, the instructions for it will, are included for free with your purchase of the instructions for the boathouse. So the option is there for you either way. And here I just wanted to give you the look of what it's like when the students are arriving. They go into the boathouse. Go ahead and place them in there. You can open the scene up from there. And you can imagine them all or have them all disembarking and getting ready to go about their uh, Hogwarts adventures. So I think that that all works out just fine. And here you can see I just wanted to show you the uh, the room that you have to play in here and set up specific scenes. So obviously this. This does mirror a specific scene from the movies. We have Voldemort and his snake in here, and we have Professor Snape. They're having a conversation. And then outside of the windows, uh, we have Harry, Ron, and Hermione eavesdropping. Um, so yeah, that's a scene that takes place in the last movie. And um, yeah, th I thought it was a pretty important scene and something that I wanted to be able to stage in here if you did want to do that. And you can see here I have it in the fully open configuration, so you have maximum room to, to set characters in here and you can have stuff happening obviously on the other side as well um, yeah there's there's lots of room in there to to play around with so um, yeah pretty happy with how this turned out let me just uh, take these guys out and, and close it back up and you can see there the, get the final kind of look at it oh and one thing I did want to mention that I didn't is uh, these window pieces are on these uh, ratcheted hinge uh, joints so they actually keep their upright shape naturally they want to stay Upright, so you don't have to worry about like setting the specific angle of, of these to get them to, to line up correctly. So there's just that. Um, yeah, so there we go, you guys. There is the boathouse set number one of phase one of my uh, Hogwarts build series, um, which is going to be something that <laughs> I really hope you guys are going to stick around to see the rest of because it's going to be uh, really, really big, really impressive, and something that I'm very, very proud of already, even though I only have um, some, you know, a few of the sets planned uh, actually designed. So yeah. Uh, all right, you guys, so thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm gonna get to work getting you guys the, uh, the videos for the next stages of this and the next parts of it and getting the instructions made. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes for these things, so um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, so I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching again. Uh, don't forget to check all the details below in the description for how you can get a hold of the sets and support the channel that way. And uh, with that, I will say mischief managed. Thanks, you guys.